live. Hey friends, great to see you here. This is Peggy Hall from the healthyamerican.org. And one of the most common questions that I get from people is what to do when they have been denied entry into a grocery store or the dentist's office or any business establishment. And I wanna take you through step-by-step step exactly what I do. This is the most frustrating thing that I think people are experiencing these days because it's common sense that you should be able to enter a store without wearing a mask, just like someone who is practicing the Sikh religion and is wearing a turban. They're not going to make him take the turban off before he enters Trader Joe's. So why in the world do they make you put on a turban on your face in order to enter Trader Joe's or Smart and Final or any of these other places. First of all, my number one tip is don't go to Smart and Final and don't go to Sprouts. These are lost causes. It's just not worth your time and effort to try to fight against them. I wanna talk about Trader Joe's and I want to talk about a couple of other places and exactly what I do. So a few months ago when the store started opening again in California, I saw that Marshall's was open. So I drove over there and before I entered the store, I saw there were a couple masked people standing outside and I used my magic phrase. And these are the exact words that you want to use. This is what has helped me. So the number one thing I say is this, what accommodations do you have as required by law for those who don't wear a mask? That's it, repeat after me. What accommodations do you have as required by law for those who don't wear a mask? And I just use the word don't. I don't give any example. I don't say I'm exempt. I don't do any of that. I just say, what accommodations do you have? Now, number one, that puts them in mind that they're supposed to have accommodations. Number two, it states that they are required to do so by law. And you'll say, Peggy, they're going to say that they'll go shopping for me, or I have to order online, or they'll do curbside pickup, so on and so forth. I've actually had people say that the store, like shopping malls and things said, oh, you can come and hour early or you can come on Tuesday to the market. It's like, that's fine by me. You know what? I don't mind coming on Tuesday or an hour earlier if that means I can shop without a mask and I don't have to see other people wearing a mask. Your opinion might be different and that's fine. I prefer the fewer hassles, the better. So actually number one, is I choose the stores that I can shop at where I know I'm not going to be hassled. I'm not hassled at Ralph's. I'm not hassled at Trader Joe's. I'm not hassled at TJ Maxx or Marshall's or Costco. And these are the places where I shop because why in the world would I try to bully my way past somebody at Whole Foods? I'm just not up for it. I am just not up for that. You may be up for it. So number one, you can either call. That's what I do. So before I went to the dentist, I called in advance. What are the accommodations you have as required by law for those who don't wear a mask? And usually that will solve your issue. Now, what I want to show you is step-by-step step, because I just got an email from a wonderful healthy American in Oregon, a pastor who really kept his temper, you know, his patience, I should say, I probably would have lost my temper with the most ridiculous, militant, ignorant, you know, I like that word, ignorant clerk at Trader Joe's. Okay, number one, you want to speak to the manager. It doesn't do any good to argue with the drive through person at, you know, Del Taco or the bagger guy at the grocery store. They have no authority zero authority. So number one, you want to speak to the manager. Now I'm going to share my screen and we are going to take a look at a couple of documents that I've prepared for you. And I want you to hold on to your hats because today is hardball. It is, what is today? Wednesday. And it is hardball Wednesday. You know, the gloves are off. I'm usually really nice and easygoing, but the number of uh, troubling stories that I get in the thousands, thousands of emails, thousands of emails of people who are struggling and suffering and experiencing the most distressing situations. And we've covered them. We've talked about um, doing the Patients' Bill of Rights. We've talked about nursing homes. We've talked about schools. And today I just wanna talk about putting food on the table, getting clothes for your body by shopping at a store as you have a right to do as a healthy American. 
And by healthy American, I mean healthy in your outlook, in your fortitude, in that flame of freedom that uh, burns brightly in your heart. All right, we're all we're all healthy Americans, meaning we're rational thinking, and we just want to live in a society that is law abiding and focused on freedom and liberty. That's what I mean by healthy Americans. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll take a look here, shall we, at my website. This is the healthy American. And I'd like you to go under civil rights and go under notice of discrimination. And it will take you to this page here. Now, I've got um, the steps of what you can do when you are denied entry. So what I recommend is, first of all, you are going to educate businesses. I'm very tired of people saying, Peggy, I can't believe you're setting out to destroy small businesses. How dare you? You've got it completely wrong. I am a small business owner. I actually educate businesses on how to stay open. I want the businesses to thrive. Businesses are the backbone of our economy and the backbone of our freedom, the backbone of our capitalist way of society. And I know that word probably sounds to some of you like fingernails on a chalkboard. <gasps> You're a capitalist, you know, like there's something wrong with that. What is a capitalist? It means you have capital, which is money, right? Money and resources. And you take that money and you invest it in your business so that it can grow and you serve patrons and you have a, a service or a product and you earn a profit. There's nothing wrong with a profit. A profit means that you're successful and you take that profit and you earn a living and you probably hire people and now they have money and now they can go shopping at Trader Joe's and Marshall's. So a capitalist society is the best form of an economy that we could have. So yes, I'm a capitalist and I'm conservative, and I'm a Christian, and I'm compassionate. How about all of those? How about all those C's? I'll make a whole t-shirt with all of those there. Wow, I feel so feisty today. You guys told me you liked it when I got a little feisty, so here you go. So number one, you want to educate the businesses. And I've got this educational, educational notice to businesses. And this is what you can do. You can hand it out to people. You're welcome to photocopy it. I would say that if you're going to embed it on a website, just put a link to my website because this is my intellectual property and this is my you know, copyright material. It's for you to use. I hope you will print it out and hand it out and share the information. But if you put it on your website, put a link to my website or say that this information was prepared by Peggy Hall, Healthy American. So number one, and I'm gonna get this a, a little um, larger here. So for the businesses, you want to remind them that they are under no lawful authority to require, uh, it, well, well, let's say you're reading it to them, to the business. You are under no lawful authority to require your employees or your patrons to wear a mask. You see, there is no law that requires this. Don't get snookered, don't get uh, bamboozled, and you know, in, hoodwinked into thinking that even in New York, they're trying to tell you that there's a law. There is no law. If there's a law, there's a code. That's why it's called the code of law. And you would wanna see the number. Don't start trotting out these health officer numbers. The only uh, regulation or law that that has to do with is the health officer. Are you the health officer? No, then you don't have to abide by that code. That code says the, that the health officer has the authority to issue an order. Well, you're not the health officer, so you don't have to worry about that code. That code of law applies to the health officer. And if there's going to be a code of law that says you have to wear a mask, there will be a code of law with a number attached to it that states clearly you have to wear a mask and that you have to require your employees to wear a mask or your patrons. It doesn't exist as far as I've seen in any state. That's what a statutory law is. There is no statutory law. These are guidelines. They're, they're guidelines. Our country does not operate on guidelines. It operates on law. Now I have this for California and you would need to put in your own state here, but you would just put in the New York constitution because I know the constitution of New York cannot violate the, violate the U.S. constitution and you have your first and fourth amendment rights and you've got your first amendment right is your expression of your religious liberty and for me wearing a mask um, violates my expression of religious liberty so I don't wear a mask because I'm not Muslim and I'm not Sikh. And just like I don't wear a turban, 
and I don't wear a veil and I don't wear a mask. And my rights are protected by the US Constitution, also by the California Constitution. I have the right to life, liberty, and my pursuit of happiness. You should read your constitution in your state. Now, also, there's federal civil rights law that protect you, not only your religious liberty, but also your medical condition that's under the ADA, and then your own civil rights law in your state. And I know you have it. Please, friends, I, mean, I love hearing from you, but please don't email me and say, Peggy, what's the civil rights law for Montana? Because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do an internet search with the words civil rights Montana, and it would be better if you did that. And then that way I can focus on making my videos and everything. So, and if you do find that and you want to send it to me, I can educate others. That's fine. So if you refuse entry to your establishment, which is open to the public, you are restricting the free movement of an individual and engaging in false imprisonment. You want to educate these businesses. They probably don't realize this. And they don't realize that if they're wearing a mask, then the level of severity of their crime just got elevated. Now, if you enforce the six feet separation, that's also construed as false imprisonment because you're restricting a person's movement. And friends, if that happens to you, you need to say these magic, th this important phrase, I do not consent. So for my pastor friend in Oregon, when the Trader Joe's manager said, I want you to stand on that circle, you say, I do not consent. Because if you do stand on that circle, even begrudgingly, and you didn't voice those words, I do not consent, then it is not false imprisonment because you did not express to that person that, that they were making you move in a way that was against your uh, desire. So you need to say that. This is very important, friends. A store policy does not trump the law, all right? Could Trader Joe's make you, this is someone else gave me this, this example, which is great. Imagine if Trader Joe's said, uh, you know, our store policy is that you have to snort a line of cocaine before you enter the store. That's our policy. We want everybody to be happy and, and energized when they go shopping. So as a condition of entry, you have to take drugs before you enter the store. It's our policy. No, because it's against the law. So you don't make a policy that's against the law. You can't have fist fights in Costco and the police won't do anything. You can't pickpocket somebody in Walmart and Walmart says, oh, no, 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 we don't call the police. It's our store policy. It's no different than violating the uh, discrimination laws. Okay. Now in California, they were making you operate your business outside. This is nonsense. <laughs> Restaurants, you don't have to do this. There's no law that says you have to serve your business patrons outside. Oh, I'm going to get a violation. They're going to take away my license. No, they won't. You call me if they threaten you. All right. You email me. I will show up. I will get on the phone with you. I've done many videos about this. No regulation, no violation. All right. Because here we go. A regulation is a law that is created through a lawmaking procedure to fulfill and carry out statutory law. There is no statutory law regarding masks or distancing or having your gym operate outside or even having your gym closed. All of that is nonsense. You don't need to do it, okay? If there is a regulation, it's given a code number and it's written into either your state. In California, it's called the Code of Regulations. California Code of Regulations, that's why it's called code of law. It's not called code of guidelines. There's no, you know, code of policy. It's a law. That's why we have law breakers and law enforcement. We don't have guideline enforcement. I don't know how much more clear I could be. Please, friends, you know, I don't want to uh, be talking about this again and again. Let's just get it straight here. So regulation, there are no regulations on the books that require masks, distancing, or other protocols. But Peggy, there is a state of emergency. And in the state of emergency, the governor can make law. No, no governor can make a law. No governor can uh, abolish a law. The only thing a governor can do is modify or suspend regulations that relate to the operations in the executive branch of government. So the governor could shorten the hours of the DMV, the governor could issue an executive order for the Department of Cosmetology to extend your license a couple of months, but no governor can make a law, period. That's why all these lawsuits are going forth because they thought they could get away with it, but we the people were looking 
And so that's what I'm here. So uh, violating these above mentioned laws while concealing your identity <laughs> elevates the criminal charges against you because now you've got your face concealed. And if you conceal your face, I know this is true for California, while you're committing a crime, it just elevates that. Now I wanna take a look at this um, next one. So we're back here. Now here's where we're gonna play hardball. I'm gonna show you how to do a citizen's arrest. <laughs> you know what? I've had it, I've had it. If you took your car to the car dealer to get it repaired, and they took your car and then when you went to go pick it up and i have a friend that this happened to they would not give him the keys they wouldn't give him the keys and they harassed him they intimidated him the whole thing was absolutely illegal and this is when i would have made a citizen's arrest now i'm not recommending that you make a citizen's arrest this is your choice your decision i'm not going to show this to you unless you repeat after me peggy this is my responsibility only. I am not holding you responsible for my making a citizen's arrest. Good, good, good. All right, so this is your choice. I'm just providing information. I'm not recommending that you do this. I'm showing you what I've researched in California and you can adapt it to your state. So here it is, the violation of laws and the citizen's arrest. That's where we're gonna go, folks. You know. I've really had it. This is on the manager. So I'm gonna take a look and here we go. This is a list of all of the laws of the, that the manager is responsible for upholding and that the manager may be violating. So to the person currently in charge of this establishment, you actually don't argue with the clerk, with the drive through person, with the cart checker at Trader Joe's. You say, I need to speak to the person in charge. Those are the words you say. I need to speak to the person in charge. Now, you can read this. And I, I have all of the California codes. Yes, you will need to do the codes in your state. Peggy, where do I get the codes in my state? you're going to do an internet search by using some of the words here, okay? Some wonderful people in certain states have actually sent me the research that they found in Delaware, Vermont, a couple of other places. But you know, there are 50 states, there's only one Peggy Hall. <laughs> I'm not able to do every state. My goal at The Healthy American is to empower you to do the research so that you can do what I do in your state. And if you can't do what I do, you're gonna connect with others. And we have our meetup groups and some of you are already engaged in other uh, you know, freedom movements, which is fantastic. So you know, all hands on deck and we'll get you underway. So as the person responsible for the operation and management of this place of public accommodation, you are criminally and civilly liable for the activities that you allow or prohibit regardless of whether you own this establishment or not. So the manager may say, well, it's, you know, I don't own the business, but they told me to do that. He's in charge now, or she's in charge. So they're responsible. Otherwise they shouldn't have that job. Now, what I recommend is that you either have them read this, which is very impactful. You have them read it out loud. So now you'd be outside of Trader Joe's and you would say, well, if you're denying me entry, I do need to inform you of all the laws you're violating. So would you just read this in initial here? So these are the initials of the person in charge so that they are educated. Now you may be the, the sacrifice. You may be the one that doesn't be that, that you're denied, but you're going to pave the way for everyone else after you give them this information. So you are hereby notified that it is unlawful for you or another employee to require someone to wear a mask. They're not a doctor. Even if you are a licensed medical doctor who has examined the person, and you have determined that person to be physically fit, the person still has the right to choose whether to wear a mask or not. They're not a medical doctor. That's what number one says. Recommending that someone wear a mask, which is designated by the FDA as a medical device, is the unlicensed practice of medicine, which is a violation of the California Business and Professions Code 2052. So you're gonna look at your state 
what is the, you're going to put in the search unlicensed practice of medicine in, you know, Kentucky, and then you'll find that code and you can, this is a document, a word document, you can modify it. Now the initial is for the manager. So he's going to say, yes, I understand. I'm not a medical doctor. Okay. Number two, it's unlawful for you or another employee to take someone's temperature. Has that happened to you? You went to the dentist or the eye doctor or the gym and they wanted to take your temperature. It's completely illegal. So you are not giving them permission and you say, I do not consent. I do not consent for you to gather that information. And they can initial that, all right? Number three, it is unlawful for you or another employee to attempt to enforce local ordinances. Now, some uh, really communistic cities, uh, and I, I know some of you are also gonna argue with me on the word communistic. I think I made up that word. And I made it up because it's, like communism, I know that it's not communism. People will say, well, Peggy, communism is where the means of production, like all of the companies and everything are owned by the people. Oh, really? Do you, did you know what happened in Russia? Are you familiar with Cuba? Do you think in Venezuela, all the people own the grocery stores? I mean, seriously, that, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Communism is, communism is oppression. It is tyranny. It is totalitarianism. It is the opposite of freedom. So we have many communistic cities in California, and one of them is the city of Costa Mesa. And the city of Costa Mesa unlawfully passed an ordinance saying that you have to wear a mask. And I know it's unlawful because it violates the California Constitution, and it violates many other laws, including the U.S. Constitution and the California government code regarding cities the num point number one says no city may make a law that conflicts with other law. So I know it's unlawful. So there's zero uh, law enforcement that could stand up in a court related to that. You don't have to worry about getting a ticket for not wearing a mask. I still have never heard of anybody getting a ticket for not wearing a mask. They've gotten a ticket for trespassing. They've gotten a ticket for other things, but not for wearing a mask. If you got a citation and it specifically says, you did not wear a mask. I want you to take a photo of it, email it to me because I want to dig deeper. Yeah, I would love to take that on. They cannot, they are not law enforcement. They are not law enforcement. Impersonating a law enforcement officer is a crime in California. And it's $2,000 and you could spend a year in jail. Now you're going to look up in your state impersonating law enforcement. Now the the uh, manager initials that so they understand that that's a third law that they're breaking. Okay, now here's a fourth law that they're breaking. It is unlawful for you or another employee to prohibit someone to enter this establishment, which is a place of public accommodation. If you don't know what that is, go back and watch my other videos. I have a hundred videos, hundreds of videos on, on uh, wearing a mask, on what to do, on schools, on doctor's offices, travel, all of that. I don't wanna, I, I can't cover a hundred videos in this one, but it is against the law. Well, Peggy, it's a private business. So a private business can have fist fights on Friday and nobody can call the cops. A private business will allow your pocket to be picked and you can't call the police because it's a private business. A private business can tell somebody in a wheelchair that they have to stay out on the curb, that's okay. A private business could tell an elderly person that they're too old and they don't want them in there shopping. That's okay. You see, just fill in the blank, friends. A private business cannot break the law. Well, they can and they do, but they're breaking the law. Okay, so federal civil rights requires free and equal access to all services and facilities without discrimination. So I go on to talk about the state code. You can look up your state code, put in your state and the word civil rights law, and you'll find it. They initial that. Okay. Number five, it is unlawful for you or another employee. Let me just move this down a little bit here. It is unlawful for you or another employee to block someone's entry. Uh-huh. So when you have that manager with the mask on at Costco or, or better yet at uh, Trader Joe's and they're standing outside with their arms folded and they're not letting you in. They're not letting you into a restaurant. 
they're not letting you into the gym. You're not, they're not letting you into uh, on the bus or whatever. Yeah. All of this also applies to riding on a bus, riding on a train. They may not discriminate against you. This applies to libraries. It applies to the DMV. It applies to your vote. It applies to a courthouse. It applies to every single place where the public can enter. Now, my house is not public. You could prevent somebody from entering your house because it's your home. I don't have a shingle out there and I'm not doing business in public. These places that I mentioned are all considered a place of public accommodation. Now, if you have your entry blocked, that, that is a violation called false imprisonment. Uh, here it is in California. It's, it, this is the California law. The unlawful violation of the personal liberty of another. So when they tell you to go stand on that circle or that um, you have to stand six feet apart while you're in line, you have to walk up one side of the aisle and walk down the other. No, you don't. You don't have to do that at all. You may not have your freedom of movement infringed upon. Here it is. Attempting to prevent someone's entry to this establishment or to restrict, detain, or confine their movement. This isn't my opinion. This is the law. Yeah, I'm getting very shrill because I've really had it with these ignorant places of business. And they're usually the big box, like the Trader Joe's and the Starbucks and on and on. The, the mom and pops really just need, need to be educated. But I've had it with these other places. This is false imprisonment. It's a crime. Okay, you go to jail for up to three years. Is that worth it? Seriously. Okay, also the markets, the outdoor markets. You don't have to wear a mask. You people working there don't have to wear a mask. This applies to you as employees. If you're an employee of any of these places, you do not have to wear a mask. And there is no law that requires you to do so. I will be your personal advocate. I will personally pay out of my pocket any fines that you get. That's how strongly I feel about this. This is how airtight I know these laws are. You get a fine and you go to court and they uphold that fine. I'm going to open up my wallet and I am going to pay for you, but I want you to go to the plate. You need to stand up. You need to take the heat and I will be right there by your side. All right. Number four, any claim of store policy or no mask, no service. Do you know somebody showed me a website for the state of Connecticut? The state of Connecticut is telling businesses to deny entry to people who are not wearing a mask? Would you guys put that, that governor in prison already? How many laws is he breaking? Come on, I'm educating you here. You've got to take the ball and run with it. This is null, void, and unlawful. And what you do in Connecticut is you educate the businesses with this form. Forget the governor. They're charlatans. They're evildoers. They're tyrants. The stores are the one that are preventing you from going in. Actually, the governor's not. It's the store. You need to talk to these businesses. And step two is coming up, the, the citizen's arrest. <laughs> I've had it. Okay. No business may enforce policy that violates the established law. You want to argue with me on this one? Bring it. Bring it. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the comments below. The comments below from the people who don't even watch the video, who then say it's store policy, it's a private business. Yeah, I've heard them for seven, eight months now. We have a lot of educating to do, my friends. Keep the educating going. So here's what happens. This legal notice that, that, that I'm reading from right now, this legal notice, well, Peggy, is it, is it official? Yeah, because it's a compilation of all the laws that are on the books. It's a, uh, a, a written explanation of all these laws. I don't know what you mean by official. Do I need to get proof that there are 24 hours in a day, 365 days in the year? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's official. It's official. The healthy American gives it the seal of, of officialness. <laughs> so uh, any attempt to prohibit the free and equal access, I know I'm getting a little snarky, but I just get so frustrated, you guys. Ah, it's going to be reported to law enforcement as criminal charges. It's also going to be reported to the U.S. Department of Justice as a violation of civil rights. 
it is going to be reported to the legal counsel of this establishment. If it's a big business like Trader Joe's or Starbucks, they have a legal department and you're going to have a copy of all of this, send it to them. Um, my legal expert, Healthy American, John J. Singleton has a document for you. It's also on my website. Um, and I will show that to you again, if I remember, and you can just adapt it. And it is looks like a lawsuit and you send it to them saying, this is the lawsuit that I'm prepared to file. And we need to do that. We need to, thousands of us need to do that. It's also going to be reported to the district attorney for possible criminal charges. And then you're going to have them initial that here. And I'll show you that other stuff uh, later, uh, probably in a different video. What I want to do is show you this document and understand it and what to do with it. Neither you nor an employee may prevent the lawful entry of a patron regardless of whether they are wearing a mask or not, okay? Attempting to prevent the entry of a patron is a violation of an implied irrevocable license that this business has granted to the public. What does that mean? Not a license like a driver's license. License means privilege. So if I'm, uh, if I sell glasses and I have a, a store on the main street and it says open and there are hours and anybody can walk in to come look at the glasses, I've extended them a privilege to come into my store. I don't need to sign a contract with every single person that comes by and have this negotiation of, you know, you can come in, but you can't steal anything. And, you know, we close at five. No, it's called an irrevocable license. I have, I've opened my doors by the fact that I'm conducting business in public, the public has the right to come in. Now, Peggy, no shoes, no shirt, no service. First of all, there's no law that says that. <laughs> there is no law that says I have to wear shoes to, to go inside. And there's that I know of. If you know that, please send it to me. But I'm not talking about shoes, am I? I'm talking about a mask. I don't breathe through my feet. <laughs> The whole thing is ridiculous. That would be like saying, you may not enter this business establishment unless you have purple hair. And if you have blonde hair, you can't come in. It's no different, friends, when you think about it. It's absolutely no different. What if they don't like my earrings? No, you don't, you cannot prevent that. If you are a law-abiding citizen, you're not, you know, running in, uh, throwing stuff off the shelves and, and you know, punching people, th those are crimes. But purple hair is not a crime. Earrings are not a crime. <gasps> Using my face without a mask on it as God created me is not a crime. Being sick is not a crime. I could go into that store and sneeze on people if I wanted to. It actually is not a crime. All right? I'm just giving you the law. People don't like the law. I will tell you, man, it is unbelievable how people want to argue with me over the law. <laughs> My very first video on YouTube was all about the law, and uh, it's, it's irrefutable. It's, you don't like the law, you can change the law, but this is the law. Okay. Now, I like this one. Any attempt by you or an employee to summon law enforcement with a claim of trespassing will be reported as assault by you or your employee. That means that if they prevent me from coming in, and, and if they call law enforcement on me, they have assaulted me, okay? They have assaulted me with a false claim of trespass, trespassing, all right? Let me explain trespassing laws and you should look it up in your state so you know exactly what it is and you are going to put your, here it is, in this state under code and you're gonna put the code. And I can see that I do need to do that one for California. Now, no one is trespassing. It, you are not trespassing if that business is open to the public. The business has extended the irrevocable license for the public to entry. So you're not trespassing by going in the store without a mask. You have entered legally, you didn't break in. It's during normal operating hours. You're not coming out there at midnight banging on the window. That would be trespassing. You have not interfered with the business. These are all of the definitions in California. So trespassing would be if, um, you know, I walked into a restaurant and I start knocking all the ketchup off the table and I'm flipping the tables upside down and I stand in, you know, I, I uh, stand in front of the cash register, put my hands on the cash register and I won't let them operate the business. You're, don't do any of that, friends, if you're the one trying to enter the business. Don't lose your temper like I am. Don't lose your temper. Don't raise your voice. Don't lose your cool. If they lose their cool, 
they're the ones, and I forgot to put it on here, but they're, I'm going to add it. They are the ones who are disturbing the peace and they are disturbing your peace. So if you have uh, a, a manager or anybody, even another patron who is harassing you, you call the sheriff, not the cops. You call the sheriff. Why? The sheriff is elected by you, by we, the people, to protect us. The police are hired by the government to protect the government. Simple, isn't it? Call the sheriff. Even if police are in your jurisdiction, every county, to my knowledge, if I'm wrong, please correct me, every county has a county sheriff that is elected by the people. And further, I recommend that you befriend the sheriff and you call in advance before any of this happens and you, you clarify these things that I'm about to tell you, all right? This is from California. I want you to run it by your law enforcement in your state. So there is no evidence of violation of trespassing. If you do have the police called on you and they say you're trespassing, this is what you say. What is the evidence of the trespassing? What is the evidence? What is the evidence of the trespassing? And there has to be evidence and there has to be two witnesses of that. I also recommend that you start recording on your phone all of this in case other people are harassing you or in case the manager calls the cops on you and says that you are losing your temper, you're gonna have it all on the phone. I also recommend that you shop with someone else so that you have a witness and all of this is recorded. Yes, friends, in the United States of America, we need to go through all of this to put food on the table. Not for long because we're creating our freedom communities where we'll be able to grow our own food, have our own exchanges. But right now, this is kind of the first aid. So you're not trespassing. And if they charge you with trespassing, you can file a complaint of assault and a false arrest. And here we go. Number nine, if you are wearing a mask while engaged in any of these above violations, remember this is for the store, this aggravates your crime and you can be convicted of assault. And even if no one is physically hurt by your behavior, and that's true in California. So I, I, I will fill in the rest of these codes for California. Um, I did most of them, but you can also do them for your state. So wearing a mask, concealing your identity makes the crime worst, as I say, worst is worse than worse. Now here comes the fun. Here's what you've been waiting for. The citizen's arrest, this is just information. I'm not recommending that you do it. You decide what you want to do. This is your own choice. You want to be uh, clear on what your options are. That's all I'm showing you. And I would run this by your law enforcement. So in California, I would say to the person, like at my, my friend there in uh, pastor friend in Oregon, yeah, I would have said to that person that you are hereby notified of a potential citizen's arrest for violations of the above laws. Now, in California, the penal code is 837, which authorizes a private person to make a citizen's arrest. I studied this thoroughly. I actually consulted with other legal firms. And here is the information. You are hereby notified of a potential citizen's arrest authorized by the California Penal Code 837 PC. And I say potential because I want them to lay off. Just by telling you that, just by you telling them this, they should say to you, um, okay, just go in and go shopping. You're gonna say, well, Peggy, what if they offer to do the, your shopping? They'll do your shopping. No, I don't want them to do my shopping. I don't, I want to choose my items. That's not fair and equal. I'm, I'm completely capable of walking in a store. And I showed you just the other day how California says in writing for the employees, don't harass the patrons. Don't approach someone without a mask. It says it. Come on. I'm tired of this. Are you tired of this? I cannot believe how tired I am of this. Okay. I took this right from the law in California. Please don't email me and ask me how to get it in your state. You're going to research that in your state. Citizens arrest and then your state, okay? Now, having said that, if you do need my help, I have a limited availability to help people privately, but friends, I've got thousands of inquiries a day. I'm trying to do the research and do the videos and do the speaking engagements and run, run the website and all the other things. So um, it's better for me to do these 
big videos where I can reach thousands of people. And then hopefully you can help yourself or, or help each other. So here it is. Under the authority of California Penal Code 837, when someone commits a misdemeanor it is in a citizen's presence or commits a felony and a citizen has reasonable cause to believe the perpetrator committed it, and uh, so whereas California courts have recommended that private persons follow certain procedures. Now, this is in California. It's likely the same in your state. Number one, the citizen should inform a person that he attends, intends to arrest him. The citizen should set uh, for the cause of the arrest. Now, I'm going to read this to you again uh, in how you're going to read it to the person. If possible, the citizen should indicate that they have authority to make the arrest. The citizen should inform the perpetrator that he has called the police or sheriff. The citizen, this is really good, should try to make an arrest as soon as possible. All right. That's what I'm saying here, friends. The citizen making the arrest can use reasonable force. Wow, that's in California. But should consider the safety of all involved. Uh, and that's what number seven says. Consider the safety. The citizen should call 911. The citizen should ask for the arrestee's cooperation. If needed, the citizen can keep the perpetrator out of harm's way in his secluded location. So I would have that manager of Trader Joe's initial this. And you're saying, look, this is what my, these are, these are my possibilities here. I actually could arrest you because you're, you, I just gave you nine charges, right? You just, I just informed you of nine counts against you. I mean, even one of these is, is a crime. Look at these nine and even 10, because I mentioned that other one of, um, the false arrest. So next you do this. So I, I would say, therefore, you and your employees have hereby been put on notice of potential civil and criminal violations of unlawfully preventing the lawful entry of any member of the public. So you could have them initial it. Now, here, here are my instructions. All right. So this is what I've learned in California. So Number one, how to make a citizen's arrest in California. Number one, you call 911 and you say, I would like to report a crime in progress. Uh-huh, I'm being harassed, I'm being detained. Uh, there's false imprisonment. Um, I'm being unlawfully uh, you know, harassed. And you start to read off these, all these points right here. Here it goes. You call 911, you inform the perpetrator of the intended arrest. And this is what California recommends. You are hereby informed of my atten attention. I think that word needs to be intention. I'll fix it. You are hereby informed of my intention to place you under citizen's arrest. You have willfully and knowingly violated these laws and you can read off the laws. My authority to arrest you is granted by California Penal Code 837. I have called law enforcement to the scene. I am requesting your cooperation until law enforcement arrives. If you refuse to cooperate or attempt to flee the scene, I have the right to use reasonable force to detain you. The law allows for you to be kept out of harm's way in a secluded location until law enforcement arrives. So friends, I'm not saying that, that you wanna get into any physical confrontation. I don't recommend that. I wouldn't want to do that. That's why I recommend that you don't do this alone, that you have somebody with you. The main idea is to inform the, the perpetrator of all of the laws that they're violating and to let them know that you are ready and willing to make a citizen's arrest. Would you let me know in a comment below if that's something you feel like you would have done? Have you ever had a situation where it got really heated and you just were like, oh, Ah, I wish I could do something here. Let me show you what you can do. There's one more thing if you don't want to go this route of the citizen's arrest. And that is where you are going to do your notice of discrimination. And the notice of discrimination is something that you're going to use to record what happened. So my pastor friend in Oregon did this. He had his clipboard and he filled this out for the woman who was the manager who was violating all these laws. And he put the date of the violation, uh, the name, the business, the location. He did the whole description and he read to her that this thing right here about public accommodations 
and that the Civil Rights Division is required to investigate complaints of discrimination, all right? Yeah, so you're gonna file that. So you fill this out, you have your name, the date, your signature, the date, your name, the signature of the violator, they may not sign it. And if they don't, you check it there. And if you don't get their name, you just put their um, description if they won't put your name. So if identity is not given, provide a physical description of the perpetrator. It probably will include the phrase uh, wearing a mask. You can't even do the physical description because their facial features are obscured. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, what do you do with this? You give it to them. Well, Peggy, they're not going to take it. They're just going to throw it away. They're going to tear it up. I don't care what they do with it. I would also snap a photo of it. So you have a record of the incident and you serve it to them. You have educated them. You have had the last word and you feel more empowered because you have taken action. Now, after you do that, you've got your record and you are going to file your complaint with the Department of Justice. You can also file your complaint with your state's Department of Justice. And here you go, you start your report. I want the Department of Justice to be notified of all of these violations. And you do your online report and then they get back to you. So here it is, here it is. I, I'm trying to do everything I can to empower you friends. Um, you can read about your, your civil rights protection, now, some people told me that they were not able to find lawyers. And um, I've got uh, employment lawyers, civil rights lawyers, search for lawyers in your state. But you know what, friends, I have something even better than you having to do all this. We are putting together the Healthy American Legal Network. Yes, we are going to have attorneys in every state who want to partner with us to not only um, offer advice and a free consultation, but to possibly take on your case, whether you have to sue your dentist, the gym, the drugstore, wherever you had your rights violated, I want to help you. So all of you legal experts out there, you can send me an email to let me know of your desire. Yeah, friends, don't email me asking me for a lawyer yet because we're just putting this together. So once we have that together, you'll be able to, uh, here, you'll be able to see the, the legal network. I'll, I'll let you know how we're going to do that. We might need to protect that network a little bit. So there might be, um, I'll let you know how that's going to turn out. I may not want that to be public knowledge right away. Um, so here's something really great that a wonderful Healthy American, thank you, Dan, made this and sent it to us to use. And he created this flyer. And this can be given to every business. Isn't it amazing? You know how when you go to a business and they have those health um, flyers that say, wash your hands, you know, like you, don't, like you know you're not supposed to, you know, when you're using a public restroom and there's a flyer that says, wash your hands. Seriously? Well, wouldn't it be better to have this flyer everywhere? Discrimination is against the law. Dan, what you did here is just fantastic. And it tells us about the federal laws that protect you. And here you go. It doesn't matter if you're the person applying for the job, if you're an employee, or if you're a customer. You are protected. You have rights. And the Constitution protects those rights. So thank you, Dan. I've got this on my website. This is just amazing. So I want you to print this out. Take it to businesses. If you are a business owner, you put that in your business. And by the way, business owners, I want to help you. I would like you to join me at thehealthyamerican.org. I do business seminars to help you stay in business legally. You don't want to violate all those laws I just showed you. Oh my gosh. Now you're probably saying, well, Peggy, OSHA requires me to do all that. No, OSHA doesn't. I'm going to do another video uh, probably uh, on Friday, all uh, so a couple days from now all about OSHA and how that you do not uh, need to do this. These are not OSHA regulations and you can uh, conduct your business without all of this nonsense. And uh, I would like to thank you everybody for joining me as I showed you <laughs> how to uh, file your notice of discrimination, make a citizen's arrest, 
if you desire, and also how to educate businesses so that it doesn't have to come to that point. I so much appreciate all of your support, your comments, your questions. I love it when the Healthy Americans are helping each other. We have meetup groups in every state and nearly every county in the United States. You can join me at thehealthyamerican.org. And I can't wait to see you there, friends. I appreciate you. God bless you and God bless America.